Thank you very much. So I stand between you and lunch. That's a tough one, isn't it? So thank you very much for having me here today. And I'm really excited to be talking to you about a topic I am deeply passionate about. I'm half Australian, half Greek, and what I have is a lot of passion, but I also promise to speak to you honestly and directly about my experiences on, when it comes to customer experience that have built up over the last 15 years. I'm going to pose the question, can we measure customer experience? And that video, um, again, talks a, a, a lot of, about what I'm, I'm going to expand on today, because really, customer experience is about you and I. We as people, we as employees, but more importantly also as, as consumers. So I ask you today, and not just for me, but also for all the sessions, really think about the topics you're going to hear today as consumers and, and think about how that applies in your own businesses. So a little bit more about me, again, sharing a bit, a bit about who I am. Um, for those that are Twitter junkies like me, feel free to, to dive on uh, and, and tweet, uh, you know, whether I'm doing a good job or bad job, be kind to me. Um, but what, I'm, what fascinates me? You fascinate me. People fascinate me. Um, I'm deeply passionate about meeting uh, people and, and learning from them. And I've had the great fortune in my career to, to work across a lot of different geographies and industries. So again, part of what I'm going to do today is share those experiences, whether they're from London, Shanghai, Singapore, or Australia, where I was originally uh, from. What makes me passionate? Well, what, 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 what am I passionate about? Well, obviously, I'm passionate about my family. This is my family back home. They keep me honest. They keep me on my toes. They're the bosses. I just do what I'm told. So I'm passionate about my family and friends. I'm also passionate about this topic, as I said. I think customer experience is the heart of every business. It unifies all of us, irrespective of the industry we work in. I'm also a good Aussie. I like sports. I love sports. I'm passionate. But when we lose, I become Greek. Yeah? So when we lost the ashes, I defaulted to my Greek heritage. I'm seriously passionate about my customers. I've spent 20 years in sales, business development, and marketing roles, so that's expected. But I am uh, very deeply passionate about making sure my customers are successful. And again, I think that's something we always is at the heart of customer experience. But another thing that unifies all of us here today are the promises we make. The promises we make to our customers, to our employees, to our suppliers, to our vendors. Ultimately, every promise we make builds trust. And every time we keep on those, so every time we deliver on those promises, that's what builds trust. That's what unifies all of us here today. Yeah? We all know this is important. You're all here today because you know customer experience is important. It's a growing mega trend. We're seeing it across all markets. But what's driving this mega trend? Why are we seeing customer experience talked about from Japan to China to India to, to the US to all four corners of Europe? The reason is there's more and more pressure on businesses. We're seeing it in the financial markets just today, this week again. The, the longevity of a, lo of a company is shrinking. We're going from a 60-year lifespan to 15 years. Yeah? So there's more and more pressure on each of us to, to look at how we can improve our business. Again, all the data is showing this. You know, 89% of marketers expect to compete primarily on basis of CX by 2015, 2016. Gartner, Forrester, 73% of companies say improving CX is a priority for the business. You can go across all of the different research houses and they're all coming back with the same story. The fact is, CX is the new battleground. That's a given. That's table stakes, yeah? But how can you measure something that is qualitative, qualitative such as experience? Ultimately, experience is personal. It's very emotionally driven. Each of us has a, uh, will have different experiences when we touch a brand. This has come, become evident to me when I was looking at these photos taken by the Duchess uh, of Cambridge. She took the photos herself. And I ask you, what do you feel when you see these photos? Anyone? Anyone? Of, maybe you think of your own kids. You know, happiness, joy. But what was really interesting to me when I read this post, saw these photos, and looked at the comments that came after that, was, a, was a, the spectrum of uh, feelings that this was generating. You know, one lady said, hire a professional um, next time, Kate. You don't even know how to pay attention to background in composing such a picture. <laughs> That's a bit harsh. <laughs> you know, a mum taking a photo of a baby, sharing it with the public, and she's getting critiqued on that. Another lady went as far as saying, very doting mum, yeah, right, but she can't wait to have them both um, basically handed off to the nanny so she can go to her next vacation. Again, really harsh, two extremes and experiences. Again, this point came home to me with my good colleague who's here with me today, Ben Noddle. We were in India, and we stayed at the same hotel, same time. Okay? We, we traveled differently to that hotel, but we actually stayed for the same period in that hotel. 
I was upgraded to this suite. It was amazing. My experience started off really great. Yeah, I was, everything was going well. The room was beautiful. The service was great. Ben, um, there was an Indian wedding going on in the hotel. He had um, Indian uh, 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 the, on either side, the wedding celebrations going on either side all night for the whole two nights. So he had, obviously had a different experience. So again, this is a real ch challenge for us. You know, how do we how do we measure that? How do we how do we how do we rectify something that's going wrong when it comes to a customer experience um, when when one customer is happy and one isn't? The fact is, emotions really create memories. Yeah, that's what really drives. Um, uh, the whole process in terms of whether we feel something has been um, met our expectations or not. So that's at the heart of what I believe drives CX, you know, in terms of customer experiences, is really the emotions people are feeling as they engage our brand. And the fact is, the world has changed, and we're not going to go backwards, yeah? I think business is changing fundamentally if we think just as little as far as five years back. But if we go even further back, customer experience was a lot easier in the past. Um, you know, ultimately, customer experience was managed by a smaller, uh, smaller teams, yeah? Um, again, it was also easier because business was much more personal, much more intimate. Our businesses were smaller. You know, the, the days of us sitting in front of a TV and having messages pushed to us are long gone, yeah? But, but we still look, long, long for those personal engagements. We still want to be able to feel like we're working, uh, uh, engaging with people on a personal level. We want to be treated with respect. We want to have that. We still hold on to those notions of, what, um, uh, what the personalized experiences were like when, we, when the business was smaller. And that's what's become really difficult as businesses have got bigger and bigger. It's become a real challenge for businesses to still deliver that personal experience. And Shep, who's an amazing speaker, I don't know about you, but I loved his keynote this morning, full of energy and, and great insight. And I think he summed it up beautifully in this quote. And I'm sorry, Shep, for stealing this, but I, I think this is bang on. What we know today is custom experience is actually customer service of the past. But what's really happened is customer experience is now the responsibility of the entire enterprise, not just one part of the organization. And then really what's fueling a lot of this change is obviously technology. Technology has really empowered us. We know that. All of you know that. All of you are armed to the teeth this very minute with your, your smartphones that are sitting in front of you or, or in your back pockets. I mean, just take a look at the change. I mean, I started work in 1990. Pretty much my desktop has fundamentally changed, whether it's YouTube, Foursquare, Instagram, all these different tools that I now actively engage with. Again, let's take a look at the desktop just from this. I mean, this was 19, uh, uh, 1998 when I first started out, or 1990, sorry, and now it's all compacted down into two devices. I can run my whole life off those, yeah? And I, in fact, I do when I travel, yeah? So I'm really empowered. You and I are really empowered. But what we've also seen is a fundamental change in how and what we want to engage with in terms of technology. We've gone from big to small, to big, to small again. So again, it's constantly moving. There's a lot of pressure on vendors to always constantly look at what customers want and expect from the technology. And the fact is we, we have to get back to simple. We have to look at how we simplify our businesses. That's a key message at SAP that we're both talking about to our customers, but also looking at internally and how we simplify the way we operate. And really, we need to embrace technology. There's no avoiding that going forward. So how do, we, how do these impacts uh, how does this all impact customer experience? Well, if you've seen me speak before, you know I'm a big fan of Brian Solis. I highly recommend this thinker, along with Shep. I mean, his books are amazing, really great books. So Shep and um, Brian Solis are actually two thinkers that have really fundamentally influenced my own uh, point of view on this topic. And Brian here, he coined the term digital Darwinism when he talks about technology and society evolving faster than the ability for companies to adapt. And that's the challenge for all of us. Yeah? Our businesses are uh, really built on 19th, 20th century business models, if we really look at it. And I'll come on to that a bit later. Yeah? The other big challenge is data. I just wrote a blog this week uh, which was talking about we need to move out of the uh, digital data um, stone age. Yeah? Because really, we've, had, we've got loads of data. It's everywhere. Um, it surrounds us. But the fact is, our businesses aren't really harnessing that data. Um, in an effective way. Again, Gartner or Forrester in this case said only 1% only, only of organizations really get to use their data. You know? If we really think about all of the data we're collecting and where it sits internally and externally, it's become a real challenge. But the brands that are really, ex really excelling at customer experience, this is an area that they're investing in and understanding the importance of. Think Uber. Think um, you know, Netflix. Uh, these brands are really are um, changing the game by using data. Again, this is one of my favorite slides, because what I want to show you here is 
the purchasing journey of a, someone looking at a mobile phone. And the point of this slide, as it builds out, is uh, you know, when we think about a customer experience, we need to think about the holistic experience, the end-to-end -end experience, all the different parts of the enterprise it's touching, all the different departments that are responsible for that. Because the reality is, customer experience is not owned by one department. The CEO and the employees ultimately, I argue, own customer experience. But when it comes to actually implementing that and executing on it, it's an enterprise-wide uh, requirement from the moment of discovering a need, me looking at you know, different sources of information, through to shortlisting, through to buying the product, tracking the order, receiving the package, you know, looking at setting up a phone. In this case, the example is based around a mobile purchase. Um, you know, network issues. Think about all the different parts of that enterprise, that mobile, uh, that telecom that I'm touching when I'm uh, traversing the enterprise. So we have to think more holistically about customer experience and start building a tribe of individuals across the enterprise that are passionate about customer ex experience but, and bring them together so we can start better understanding how we can actually um, improve those moments, those key moments that are really critical to the buyer's journey but also critical for our business when it comes to driving profitability because at the end of the day, we have to make a profit, yeah? Otherwise, we're out of business. So the fact is, our customers choose their own journey. They choose which channel they're going to engage with you. They're going to choose how they want to configure the products. Their choice sits with them, yeah? Ultimately, we have to think about our customers as, a, as an individual, as a person, as a human being, yeah? And understand the journeys they take and how that can change each time they touch our brand. And ultimately, we need to think about the infinite possibilities that that um, creates, yeah? So my background is sales, yeah? So I spent 20 years in sales. Yet marketing, and I've been in marketing now for four or five years, and I love it, but marketers accept a 2% conversion rate. That's bad. In sales, I would have been fired within the first quarter, yeah? How is it, as marketers, we've accepted that become, that's become acceptable? And more importantly, what about the 98% of customers that didn't engage? How do they feel about that experience, yeah? So we need to get better at this. This is a really critical area um, you know, certainly in the marketing department, but that extends beyond just marketing, yeah? The fact is we've now entered the age of contextual marketing, yeah? So what is contextual marketing? I'm just going to put a definition up that I think, I mean, there's lots of different definitions, but this is one that holds um, true to me. You know, contextual marketing is the practice of personalizing your business to, to an audience based on who they are, and what they want, and need, or do. So that's what contextual marketing is all about, yeah? But in order to do contextual marketing, we have to start understanding data. We have to become intimate with data. Start looking at that data and harnessing that data. Actually, we're going to harness what Gartner calls dark data. Yeah? We heard a lot about big data. It's all about dark data now. Yeah? But I actually like the term dark data because big data has always been around, if we're really honest. Yeah? When I first started out at work, I had to go into a big filing cabinet and pull files out and hunt through the data. It actually has got easier for me to find data in some respects. But What's stopped it, what's created challenges for me now is the silos that are set up in the organization that house that data and accessing that. That's what's become the challenge and that's what's the idea behind dark data. So we need to get that data. And again, I touched on Uber earlier. Uber, Netflix, um, Facebook, all of these businesses are fundamentally changing the game because Uber's not in the transportation business. Netflix isn't in an entertainment business, nor is um, Facebook in really the networking business. They're all in the data business. Yeah? So whether you're a bank or a retailer, we have to start thinking more like software companies because guess what? That's what's happening. We've got companies that are thinking more like software companies disrupting entire industries, yeah? So in actual fact, that's actually where we have to start doing a mind shift in how we actually think about developing our go-to-market strategies going forward. You know, we need to better understand the customer journey and all the possibilities that open up um, with that. I'm going to play, oh, sorry, I'm going to play a short video now. Thanks. Oh, no. Yeah, just click on the bottom left hand corner. I insist on using a Mac, so this is mostly causing a bit of the problem, sorry. And do we have some sound? I'll tell you what, I'm going to skip the video, don't worry. I'm going to go to the next one, though. Can we have the sound ready for this one, though? Um, so what I'm going to go to is a T-Mobile case study. I love T-Mobile and the work they're doing. I don't actually have them as a supplier here because I'm based in Singapore, but the strategy they have implemented and 
the fundamental change that they've implemented in the US market is profound. Um, and this is led from the top, from the CEO, CMO coming together and really have dry, uh, implemented a, a fundamental uh, change in, in the DNA of the organization. They actually launched a campaign, a couple, uh, maybe it's about two years old now, called the Uncarrier. Um, great case studies, if you want to learn more about this, I'll share, share that after the event. But what they've really done is looked at challenging the status quo, the management dogma. Um, they've gone in and really empowered their employees. So the video I'm going to show now is an internal video. Yeah? It's not great production value, but they're going to talk about the story. This is what they created to help articulate what the transformational journey they're on internally. So I'll play that now for you uh, to, to, to listen to. Have we got the sound? So like I said, not a great production value, but the story is good there. The, at the heart of what these guys have been on is, uh, and, and, and is a very rich and deep understanding of the importance of mapping that customer journey, under, uh, developing rich customer profiles, bringing people, process, and technology together to enable them to engage their customers like never before. We really see at T-Mobile a blending of uh, marketing and service as well. They're looking at creating um, you know, brand utility so that actually you know, you don't feel like you're being sold to because actually what they're delivering you is a richer experience that's based around 
past behavior that you've uh, experienced with, their, with, their, with them as a brand, and then pushing relevant offers to you. So they're a great example, and we've got loads of customers out there now, uh, now really understanding this, you know, t whether it's Target, you know, H&M in the retail sectors, you know, whether it's online businesses um, like Diamonds 21, um, or, or Granger, who are an industrial supplier, all these businesses, B2B, B2C, are now understanding the importance of developing um, and bringing physical and digital um, experiences together. So it's, again, another key message for me. Um, but what, what I said at the start, can we really measure cu customer experience? And I, I would argue it's very difficult to measure on a one-to-one -one basis in terms of the emotional um, uh, feelings that you are having at that point in time. But what we can start doing now with technology is start mapping the buying behaviors, ma mapping this customer sentiment that you're experiencing and you're articulating through your different channels that you're pushing out to the market. We can start grabbing that data and start channeling it in a way that gives us a richer insight in terms of who you are, what is driving you, what are we doing that uh, is you know, resulting in you, you know, transacting business with us or what, you know, what, where do we need to improve? You know, we can then start using that to see also whether which customers are uh, becoming a service drain for us. You know, which are the most demanding customers that aren't leading to uh, us uh, developing the, you know, the margins that we were ultimately um, targeting. Uh, we can also take that data and start segmenting it in a way that enables us to target the right assets, the right people. You know, whether it's a direct sales force or our marketing campaigns to in a more relevant way and, and ultimately optimize um, way. And again, what we're seeing now through technology is the ability um, to also help arm us as professionals. Because again, as a consumer, I'm armed with technology. Now we as, uh, as professionals can use this technology in a, a lot smarter way. Again, take huge tracks of uh, data and start channeling that in a way that enables us to act um, more accurately with more confidence in a more robust way. So again, this is where I get, I'm getting really excited in terms of the, the, the leaps and bounds we've seen in terms of the technology that's coming online. And I'm more excited when I see brands like Burberry, like T-Mobile, really understand the importance of how they can take that technology, but equally, like I said, still focus on the people process element and bring those three core pillars together. So Burberry is another great example of an old world brand retailer. Everyone here would most really know Burberry. Um, and yet they embarked on uh, several years ago uh, a journey to, to start rethinking the, the, the retail experience. And what they had at the heart of their um, strategy was the idea of merging both the physical and digital experiences. So whether I started my journey on the website and ended in the retail um, store or vice versa, that those two worlds will come together beautifully. And uh, effectively now, you know, you can go into their stores, you can go, first go online, I can you know, look at the, the products that I'm interested in, reserve some of them so that I can go in and, 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 and go into a changing room and have those, uh, those products brought to me, um, you know, get recommendations through the technology of what, what might work with those, those items. So again, um, really exciting stuff. And what we've seen with uh, Burberry, if you look at their, um, their results, over the last five years, their, their business has been growing roughly 17%, but more importantly, their profits have been increasing with that. So again, they're delivering top and bottom line improvements and enriched customer experiences. So again, the win-win scenario there. So I started this presentation with a question, can we measure CX? I mean, of course we can measure it, but, not, um, but it's not easy. Again, we have to think about this, and I, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is a journey, yeah? It's a, you know, this, is a, this is a journey will take um, a lot of hard work. But the reality is the technologies and, and the knowledge are now coming together. The fact that you're all here today uh, and are hungry and thirsty to learn more about CX is a great sign. We're seeing this across the globe. So there's definitely a real momentum now building up in people wanting to learn about this. Um, we've got great examples of brands. You're hearing them today in terms of through Deepak in India, um, in terms of the, the, the work they're doing there through to Burberry um, and and also T-Mobile, who I've touched on today. But we need to measure those discrete moments. We need to identify what those important moments are. But it's not simple. I'd love to say, like I said, this is not a simple thing, you know? We can create a strategy, but the reality is there's gonna be bumps and scrapes along the way. I'm gonna to go to Ranta Tata here. You know, ups and downs are very important to keep us going because a straight line, even in an ECG, means we're not alive, yeah? <laughs> I mean, he's so right on that, yeah? So again, this is a, this is a journey. You're gonna get bumps, you're gonna get scrapes, you're gonna get it wrong sometimes. Um, we need to create an atmosphere within our teams that, there's, uh, that they fail fast, learn fast. This is my own CMO. He, are, he, he pushes this into our organization, our part of the organization, in saying that, that you know, we need to, to really look at how we can experiment in improving customer experiences. 
Because ultimately, if we can simplify the businesses, we can get a step ahead of the competition, yeah? That's the goal, yeah? Let's really make it simple. But simple's not easy, you know? Again, look here, Steve Jobs, the master of customer experience, I would say, one of the masters, yeah? Even he said, simple can be harder than complex. You have to work hard to get your thinking clean, to make it simple, but it's worth it in the end, because once you get there, you can move mountains. I would even say that he's gone to prove that you can move industries, entire industries, yeah? So if you think of what Apple did and achieved, they changed the landscape in a lot of different industries and continue to do so, yeah? I'm gonna go to Peter Drucker, another great thinker that's influenced me um, and was well ahead of his time, you know, because he defined, he says that because the purpose of a business is to create customers, I think we all agree with that. The business enterprise has two and only two basic functions, marketing innovation. Marketing innovation produce results, all the rest are costs. If I was to modernize or update that, I would swap out marketing for customer experience. Customer experience and innovation are at the heart of businesses today, yeah? Um, I think when he was talking about marketing, he would have been, he would have been, he'd be talking today about customer experience. I really do believe that, yeah? <clears throat> the fact is there are no new ideas. Mark Twain. I mean, those of you who are old enough, you might remember um, Kit Knight Rider, you know, talking on the phone. So these ideas have been around for some time. Yeah, these concepts aren't new, yeah? Um, so innovation is really continually looking at What's in the market today and how can we build on that? That's what something Apple, I believe, really mastered. Yeah? They didn't necessarily bring new products to market, but they definitely um, thought about how they could configure the, the, the experiences that they delivered and ultimately the products in new ways that actually helped them achieve a, a, a competitive edge. Ultimately, our business is about customers. We need to think about them as people. Just remember, again, when you're in your business, think about your own experiences as a consumer, what you're looking for. Look outside your industries, yeah? Look, if you're in the banking sector, look at a retailer, look at Apple. That's what Apple did when it, um, when it looked at building its retail stores. It went from not having any retail stores about seven years ago to being the most profitable retailer on the earth. It looked at Burberry, it looked at Prada, it looked at all these brands, and then looked at how they can incorporate its own um, thinking into the process and ultimately had people at the heart of that business, yeah? At the strategy. You know, ultimately, if you get this right, we see this, you know, we become brand advocates. You know, you heard me talk about Apple a little bit. Clearly, I like Apple. I'm a fan of Apple. But I feel the same about the Oberoi Hotels in India. Fantastic brand. I, every, every time I talk about hotels in India, I, put, I bring those two together. So again, we want to create advocates. And we do this by simplifying our business. And ultimately, simple is, for me and, and SAP, is, it's about contextually understanding our customers, yeah? It's about thinking about all of the channels that they can engage us with and looking at how we can bring them together, creating an omni-channel, multi-channel, you know, the channelless customer experience, whichever, whichever buzzword you want to use, yeah? But ultimately looking at how we can collapse those channels into, uh, give us a consistent point of view on how that customer is uh, feeling about our brand and ultimately what they're doing with us as a brand. We integrate the customer into the business, yeah? We empower our employees to deliver on their brand promise. We create an agile environment that enables our employees to adjust to, the, to the, the, the behaviors we're seeing and the trends that are unfolding in the market. We do this in a real-time way. We look at how we can harness that data and channel it in a real-time fashion. We simplify our business by creating an engaging experience for our customers that extends across the entire enterprise. And if we do this, I believe you will get a step ahead. And I don't believe, I know, we're seeing this in our customer base. We're seeing this with the brands we're working with globally. Again, I'm not gonna go into um, too much detail about us, but for those that don't know us, SAP is obviously a, a well-established brand in, in the software market. What we bring is deep understanding of 26 industries and 11 line of businesses, yeah? And we bring technologies that enable a design to come together to help you architect a customer experience strategy. So CX isn't just about sales, service, and marketing. It's supply chain, it's logistics, it's HR, it's billing, it's all of these different elements coming together in a way that delivers delightful customer experiences. I'm gonna finish with one short video. If we can have sound, please.
I love this ad. If you've seen me, I've, I've used this a couple of times before. The reason I love it, A, that's me and my wife. I'm the digital guy. She's the, the traditional um, uh, lady in terms of how she documents things, etc. But what I also love about it is a key message for me. Think about digital and physical. Those two worlds coming together. How do you bring those two worlds together in a way that can actually um, create great and meaningful experiences? Um, for those, again, I'm going to wrap up very quickly. So, Challenge, challenge the this dogma, uh, management dogma, challenge the status quo. Go, I don't wait for your boss to figure this out. Don't wait for the CEO to figure it out. If you do that, it'll be too late. Go out, find other people that are passionate about this and start working on how you can ultimately deliver happy and delightful uh, customer experiences. If you want to learn more about, um, uh, you know, get some really great insights in terms of some, some great thinkers, we, we sponsor a website called the, the Future of Commerce, so I encourage you to go out and check that out. Um, I also encourage you to come to the booth. We've actually got some of the technology I've been talking about today um, where we, we're showcasing how digital and physical can come together. We've got a changing room made of glass. Don't worry, you have to, don't have to take any clothes off, but you can see how we use the technology now to create a richer customer experience. And we've got a great wine shelf uh, uh, demo to show you. So please come and have a check this out. We'd love to talk to you. And with that, um, I would love to thank you for um, uh, being here and, and, and supporting this great event. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.